He is from the School of Chemistry and Molecular Bioscience. He is researching the biochemistry and cellular biology of neurodegenerative disease. You heard a bit about this from Justin Newbury earlier tonight with his talk on MND. Tonight, Heath will talk about his big idea for developing better drugs to treat Parkinson's disease. Please welcome Professor Heath Ackroyd. It might first start as a tremor, something only small that leaves as quickly as, as it appeared. Next, a shaking in a leg, again only minor and such that it's not even noticeable by other people, but it's enough to get you worried. The shaking progresses to other areas of your body and such that now other people do notice. You decide to go to a doctor to work out what's going on. After meetings with doctors and specialists, after blood tests and scans, and after everything else has been ruled out, you're told you have Parkinson's disease. What I'm describing is the pathway to diagnosis for many of the 6.3 million people worldwide currently living with Parkinson's disease. It's our second most common neurodegenerative disorder after Alzheimer's disease, and its incidence is growing due to our ageing population. In Australia, each and every day, 30 people are told, you have Parkinson's disease. Debilitating, progressive, incurable. That's the current prognosis for those people. My big idea involves finding drugs that act to slow or even prevent diseases like Parkinson's disease. In order to develop these drugs, my research seeks to understand what happens at the molecular level to cause these diseases. Clinically, Parkinson's disease is, de is defined as a disorder of the nervous system. It's the result of damage and death to specific nerve cells in the brain, the ones responsible for the production of dopamine. Dopamine is a small molecule your body uses to control how muscles move. Without it, muscles spontaneously contract, or they do not contract at all. And it's this that leads to the characteristic symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Tremor, uncontrollable shaking, rigidity, a slowness of movement, and a loss of balance. In people not affected by Parkinson's disease, there's a region in the midbrain known as the substantia nigra, this region appears darker than the surrounding regions because it produces the pigment melanin. In the brains of Parkinson's disease patients, this region has been lost. If we look inside this region, we see that many of the nerve cells that would normally be there have been lost during the course of the disease. And in the nerve cells that remain, we see unusual structures called Lewy bodies. These Lewy bodies are large deposits or clumps of protein and are the hallmark of Parkinson's disease in the brain. But these clumps of protein or large deposits of protein are not just associated with Parkinson's disease. As you've already heard from my colleague, Justin Yerbury, we also see these protein clumps or these protein deposits in other areas of the brain or in the spinal cord. And here they're associated with other neurodegenerative disorders such as motor neuron disease, or Alzheimer's disease. We believe that this clumping together of protein and its deposition in nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord is what causes these neurodegenerative diseases. My research seeks to find drugs that act to inhibit this protein clumping process in order to treat these diseases. So, how am I going to do that? Well, Justin's already told you some of this story, so I'll just recap the important parts uh, that are applicable to my talk. So proteins are made up of a linear chain of amino acids, as Justin told you. And pro these proteins, most proteins in your body, can fold into a specific three-dimensional shape. 
It's the amino acid sequence of the protein that provides all the information for that particular protein to fold into its particular shape. And the shape is critical because it's the shape of the protein that enables it to perform its biological function. The shape is actually held together by bonds between the amino acids, which link together certain parts of the protein, holding them into shape. But you know what? Proteins don't always stay folded. You see, the bonds that hold these proteins into shape can break, and in fact, they often do. One of the main factors that can cause these bonds to break are a change in the environment that surrounds the protein, a change we call biological stress. A stress might be a change in the temperature of the, uh, around the protein, a change in how acidic or basic the solution is, or the presence of free radicals. Each of these changes can cause the bonds to break and cause proteins that were normally unfolded to start to, normally folded, to start to unfold. Now, this is a really critical time in the life cycle of a protein, because when proteins start to unfold, they become sticky, a bit like chewing gum, and therefore in danger of sticking together with other unfolded proteins. It's this process that leads to the protein clumps and protein deposits that I've talked to you about. But you know what? Proteins are folding and unfolding in our cells all the time. In fact, they're doing it now as you sit there and listen to me talk. But we don't all get protein clumps in our brains. We don't all get Parkinson's disease. And even for those that do, for the majority, it only really occurs in the later stages of our life. So what normally prevents this protein clump from forming? That question lies at the heart of my research. You see, our cells have evolved an exquisite quality control system to prevent this protein clumping process. One of the main components of this quality control system are molecular chaperones. Molecular chaperones exist inside and outside of our cells, and it's their job to make sure that proteins stay folded, and if they start to unfold, it's the molecular chaperones that prevent them sticking together. So in essence, the molecular chaperones are our body's frontline defenders against this pro uh, protein clumping process. The levels and the activity of the molecular chaperones inside our cells is governed by one protein, a protein called heat shock factor one. As the name implies, heat shock factor one is uh, the protein responsible for how our cells respond to stress, such an increase in temperature, so-called heat shock, or a change in pH. Normally, in non-stressed cells, heat shock factor one resides inside our cells in a so-called inactive state, and it's held in this state by the other proteins. However, upon cellular stress, heat shock factor one detaches from these proteins and so becomes activated. The activation of heat shock factor one ultimately leads to a dramatic increase in the levels of molecular chaperones inside our cells. These levels are dramatically increased in order to cope with the protein unfolding and the protein clumping that can occur during times of cellular stress. So my big idea is to exploit this quality control system in order to protect cells in danger of forming protein clumps associated with disease. One way I aim to do this is by identifying small drug-like molecules that can release heat shock factor one from its inactive state, even in the absence of stress. By doing this, this would act to activate heat shock factor one and boost the levels of molecular chaperones in those cells in order to fight against this protein clumping. And so I believe this, this approach has the potential to be developed as a therapeutic for the many diseases that are associated with this protein clumping process. By harnessing this stress pathway that's already inside our cells, I hope to prevent the clumping of protein that leads to neurodegenerative diseases. 
by developing activators of this stress pathway into drugs, I hope that one day people diagnosed with Parkinson's disease don't have to be told they're fighting a debilitating and progressive disorder. Instead, through my big idea, I hope that these people can be offered a treatment. And who knows, even one day, a cure. Thank you.